The key phrase is general term, which is why I remembered oh, that's actually very important to have that there. This TK plus one uh, doesn't really matter, uh, and you'll, you'll see why as I start to work through this. The T just stands for term, okay? So we know that this thing here, when we expand out, the whole thing is gonna have a whole bunch of terms. Do you remember how many? 11. 11 terms, because um, you're on the 10th row of Pascal's triangle, it's got those ones on the sides. There will be 11 terms. They wanna know what any particular term individually will be, okay? So what I like to start doing is, let's actually, if you can't, if you can't remember straight off the top of your head, oh, this is the way the formula works, or even if you can, but you wanna make sure you get it right, just think about what this is gonna be, set up the pattern for yourself, and then the general term just kind of follows off from there. Okay. So we remember, every binomial expansion, every term in the binomial expansion has three pieces. Do you remember what the three pieces are? What N comes first? NCR. There's the NCR, NCR. bit, yeah. right? Now let's just worry about that. Mm -hmm. We are on the 10th row of Pascal's triangle because of this 10, right? So this is gonna be 10 C, the first, the one. first along the, the row is actually the zero term. Do you remember that? Yeah. Okay. So this is this is why we're getting our head back <laughs> in a year. Ten C zero. Then you're gonna have some of these guys and some of these guys, right? Those are the other two components. Don't forget, this is actually a negative one over x, so the minus sign's gotta come along for the right. Which one do you want to start with? Do you want to start with lots of these or with lots of these? Uh, let's just do the next. Yeah, I think that's a natural way to go. So we'll say there's going to be 10 of those, mm -hmm. right? Which means, how many of these guys are there? Zero. Zero. Zero of them, right? That's it, that's the whole first term. Of course we can simplify it, but it's more important to know what each of the pieces are and how they're constructed, because you otherwise can't do anything for the general term. Move one along. The NCR, it moves one along. So what am I going to have? 10, 1. 10, C, 1. Everything will be 10, C, this, 10, C, that. This term is, we started with lots of those, so it's going to ratchet down one. We started with none of these, so it's going to go up by one. So this question is basically asking to just do this NCR thing. Okay, now all it's asking for is, well, okay, I now know what every single term is basically in the same format. So now I know, want to know what's a particular term going to be. This is term... For K, they're saying this is term, I'm just thinking about this, term one, this is term two, right? So in this format here, what they mean by K, I know this is a little bit weird, but hopefully it makes sense in a second. This is term zero plus one. This is term one plus one. So the zero, the K, is the, the number of one. That zero there, the K, is this number and this number, right? And it's also that number in there, right? Because now when you move along, let's shuffle over and use a different color this time. The one is in all the same spots, right? It's here, it's here, and the nine is actually 10 take away one. Do you agree? So now I can use, that's all I need. I can now say, therefore, term k plus 1 is going to be equal to... <sighs> Look at the parts that are the same every time. There's always a 10 there. Every term has that. But, <coughs> excuse me, depending on which term you're on, this number's different. <coughs> excuse me. That's I thought. <laughs> what is that number? In the t0 plus 1, it's 0. So tk plus 1, it's going to be... Okay. Oh, no, it's because this can change. Oh, this changes. Okay, yeah. You see that? Yeah, see how these yeah. match and these match? That means these have to match. Yeah? How many of the x terms am I going to have? Uh, 10 minus k. 10 minus k. Look, see? 10 minus 0, 10 minus 1, 10 minus 2, 10 minus k. And then lastly, how many of these negative 1 over x terms will there be? Okay. There are going to be k of them. Now, you're not done yet, okay? Because you've got x's here and x's here, these can interact with each other, okay? So I'm going to start to simplify this a little bit. This, you just gotta hang out the front. I mean, we could do factorial notation, but it doesn't simplify with anything else that's there. So you just leave it, okay? 
These guys are different though. I'm going to first go to write this guy. This I'm going to pull apart into two pieces. Okay. Do you agree that this is negative 1 times x to the negative 1? Yeah. That's okay. They both have a power of k. Right. That means I've got 10 c k, x to the 10 minus k. The negative 1 gets raised to the power of k. And the x to the negative 1 also gets raised to the power of k. So uh, I actually don't need this. This is going to be x to the power of negative k. I just multiply those indices across. And now I can see here and here multiplying numbers with the same base. So the final line, I'm going to put the powers together, which leaves me with 10 minus 2k. And it doesn't really, I mean, I probably shouldn't put that over there because it's a number, but that's fine. Okay? You're done. You have identified correctly how the, the expansion works. You've then generalized. That's what we call this. These are specific terms. This is the general term. And then you just had to muck around with the algebra until you got something like there's x's are here and here. There's no reason to do that. So we're done. Would you, would you say as a general rule, when you have like a, a fraction to flip, to flip it around? Yeah, so negative indices, the reason why we do this is because if you think about the way indices started, they start like this. Uh, 2 squared is 2 times 2. 2 cubed is 2 times 2 times 2. 2 to the 4 is 4 of them. Mm -hmm. Okay? But then when you say, oh, what does 2 to the negative 1 mean? You can't, it doesn't fit this definition, right? You're like, well, there's, how do you multiply something by itself negative 1 times? So you have to think, okay, well, let's just look at the pattern. This is 16. This is 8. This is 4. I guess that means if I go back one more, that will be 2 because I'm dividing. If I go back one more, that'll be 1. That's where we get the 0 power form. And if I go back one more still, I divide by 2 every time, which leaves me with a half. So that's why, that's why the result is it's the reciprocal.